What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics, history, and action figures. And when I say the best place, I mean it because you guys are going to love this. Let me give you just a really quick sneak peek at this mystery box. Oh, yeah, that is right. That is a box full of Spidey figures. So if you're new to our channel, this is one of our mystery box videos. This is a box of toys that has been packed away in storage for years and years. I don't know, but I kind of generally know what's in this one. But I go through each figure. I look at it. I go through the history of it. I give you my memories of the figure, what it represents. And this is a good one because I've been looking for this box for several weeks. I actually went to my storage unit yesterday thinking maybe it was there. I brought back a different box for us to go through. And then I found this one. This box filled with all of these Spider-Man figures used to be my Spider-Man display. If you haven't seen my tour of the Secret Lounge and my Marvel Legends collection, you should definitely check that out. But years ago, before I redid the Secret Lounge, these were the figures that made up all of my Spider-Man display. Since then, we've gotten some new great figures. And so those are the ones that are down there. But these are the ones that just a few years ago made up the display. So let's kind of pull some of these bad boys out and see exactly what we've got. And let's start with my friend. Looky here, we got Ben Riley. So if you don't know, Ben Riley was Peter Parker's clone. His professor, Miles Warren, was obsessed with Gwen Stacy, made a clone of Gwen, made a clone of Pete. They fought. It was not certain if the clone or if original Peter won. Ben Riley comes back after being on the lam for about five years as the Scarlet Spider and is told that he is the one true original Spider-Man. And so he has this beautifully designed Mark Bagley costume that's a, a great take on the classic Spidey suit. I have always loved this costume. This is not the greatest action figure. This is one of Hasbro's earliest efforts, but still, I love me some Ben Riley, and uh, we're going to see some more of Ben Riley here pretty soon in our History of Spider-Man series where we're working on Carnage and the Clone Saga, so be ready for that one. Uh, okay, look at this. So check out this sculpt on this on the head of this Spidey. Tiny, tiny little eyes, even tinier than the eyes that we tend to see on like the first appearance Spidey. It's got a really thin frame, huge spider on the back. It's got this black suit. This was in the Spidey Classics line, so this wasn't in Marvel Legends proper, but what an interesting looking Spider-Man figure that one is. Big spider here going along with just this, these tiny eyes. We're going to pull him back out when we do some comparison shots. And here's another one that you may not have seen very often. This again was in that Spider-Man Classics line. I This isn't exactly the Alex Ross version, but that's a very similar to the way Alex Ross tends to draw Spidey's head. This is, uh, it doesn't have any kind of, well, it's got a little bit of an ab crunch there, and it has those kind of funky toy biz ball hips, good ball shoulders, got articulation uh, at the fingers, but just a, a neat kind of regular Spidey that showed up in the, in the Spidey Classics line. Uh, here we go. Now, this is a really, really well done paint app for Spidey 2099. You can see that this one came with a larger cloth kind of web cape that Miguel O'Hara tended to wear with his costume. It's got good ball jointed shoulders, but it's only got T jointed hips. So that really kind of decreases the flexibility and the posability of this figure. But as far as a paint app goes, man, that's really nice. It's got that sweet, blue metallic paint with some really, really good, really clean red highlights. So this was one of our earliest six inch figures of Spidey 2099 and it's good. It holds up for sure. All right, here we go. We got to uncoil this guy. Let's see if we can get him pulled out from under the, the figures that he's caught up with. Good grief. This is harder than I thought. Oh, it's because they both have a mechanism. All right. This one I've always thought of as sort of the John Romita Jr. 
Spider-Man. He's very angular, and John Romita Jr.'s art in the early 2000s very much was angular along those ways. Now, of course, he's got his little play feature because, again, these were toys made by the company Toy Biz. It literally says it in the name. But what they would do, particularly during this time frame from around 2000, 2001, when the Spider-Man Classics line debuted, uh, running sort of parallel to Marvel Legends, is they really dug deep into some artist-specific Spider-Man figures. And that's why all of these were in my display, because they all were very much specific to a certain artist. And this is sort of that John Romita Jr. version of that. Along those same lines, here is a figure that I think, you know, there's a couple in here that represent the artwork of Care Andrews, probably not pronouncing that right, but he drew a very thin, very spidery looking Spider-Man. This one, I have actually painted those eyes white. I bet you will find one with the original glow-in-the-dark eyes. He's got a little metal thing back here that when you attach whatever play feature he came with would light those eyes up. But again, a different type of head. Look how tight those webbing lines are throughout that entire costume. You know, compare that to the webbing lines, particularly on the body of this one or here. You can see what a huge difference it is, how tight those web lines are. All right. So, oh, nope, different figure. Guess what? That is stuck because this figure came with magnets on his feet. So th this is the Umberto Ramos version of Spider-Man. Very distinctive eyes, those big black outlines. And Ramos was famous for having more of a cartoony style. And so he would get a lot of expression out of Spidey's head sculpt. And this is a great example of that. Now this is on the original Spider-Man Classics body. And a great body, you know, they used it for a lot of things, but they put this Ramos head sculpt on here, and I'm fairly certain, I think I can see it down there, we're going to get a full Humberto Ramos figure here later on in this box. Before we do that, let's check out this animated figure. So this looks like one that came from the Disney Plus uh, Spider-Man Unlimited cartoon. Much more colorful blue, much more vibrant blue. Doesn't have, well, he does have ankle joints, but a little bit more limited in the articulation. No no articulation through the torso, but a good representation of the, the animated look of Spidey at that time. Now, this one was the one that was stuck because he has a magnet feature there. This is meant to represent Mark Bagley's art for Ultimate Spider-Man. And there's a couple of ways that you can tell. The easiest way is no one else drew the spider on the back like this. This, where the legs were like, the four, eight legs were like stuck together, is a classic look for Ultimate Spidey. He's got the big eyes that Ultimate Spidey has, but just look at this frame. You can see that this isn't like a grown-up. This is a teenager. You know, he definitely has that thinner frame. He's he's He hasn't fully developed, it looks like. His hands and his feet are kind of big and out of proportion, almost like a gangly kid. But this is meant to be Ultimate Spider-Man. And again, the total tell is the spider on the back. Very cool. Very cool. I never particularly liked the Iron Spider. I guess I like the fact that this is a translucent figure and it kind of lights up. But I, you know, it's crazy because I love Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man and I love those movies, but I don't like it when Iron Man, you know, gives up armor and he's just got like Iron Man armor on. It's, you know, I'm complicated. This life is, life is complicated. Oh, hey, look at this big guy. Here's something else I don't really like. So yeah, sitting right here, Andrew Garfield. So I can't remember if this is Metacom or if this is uh, a hot toy. But this is a 12-inch figure, and it's actually a really nice one. I mean, it's got, you know, good good articulation. I want to say this is the Metacom version from the first Amazing Spider-Man movie. Still has that very movie spidery design on the back, and you can see the, the texture throughout his costume. Pretty nice figure. Was in my previous display, but just doesn't, doesn't cut the mustard 
can't make it into the new display, even though that's a really good representation of um, Spider-Man there. Okay, ah, here it is. Let's go ahead and grab this. So this is full of Berto Ramos. You can see how those eyes are there with the big, big, big black outline, but look at how squared off the profile of that head is. It just is, I mean, it's such a unique style. He also drew him with these huge latissimus muscles. So you can see just kind of how broad his shoulders are through that area. The, the shoulders themselves are square. And look at these cartoony, knobby fingers and hands. You know, they, Toy Biz did such a great job. You don't have to go through this level of effort in trying to represent a singular artist's work. It will sell without it, but when you care enough to actually sculpt the hands like that, you know you're dealing with some people who really, really care about what they're doing. And just for comparison, let's pull back the previous Ramos figure. You can see totally new head sculpt. You know, this was a much rounder, more typical head on this one. This one has that very, very square Umberto Ramos head. I have been looking for this figure for a long time. I did not know where it had gotten to. I'm so glad that I found it. So we're, we may have to keep him out for a little while. That's such a cool figure. Once again, I think this was meant to be an Ultimate Spider-Man. Again, he's got that boyish physique. It may even be modeled after the, the same uh, body frame, but doesn't have the same spider on the back. So we're just going to call this kind of a, a kid, kid Spider-Man figure. Let's grab some black suits. So not certain what series this came out in. So this is a black suit with like silver highlights uh, based off of a, a very commonly used buck that Toy Biz Hasbro was using at the time. I want to say this is maybe one of the earlier Hasbro figures. Yeah, 2008. So so this is Hasbro took over the line in 07. So this is one of their, their earlier, earlier efforts. This one's a little bit better, I think. Um, it's a more muscular Spidey, uh, bigger, broader shoulders, stronger kind of head. Got a really, really nice head sculpt on this one. I love the Spider logo. I, I just think that's such an aggressive looking black spider. I mean, it, it just, it's so much tougher than that one. You know, you can, you can see, I mean, this is still very comic accurate. But just look how much more aggressive that spider is. That's a cool black suit Spider-Man. And then here is basically the first version of that silver one that you saw. But this is with the white. Again, he just he just kind of looks softer. The eyes look softer. The white looks softer compared to this black suit. Very cool. Hey, here's Peter Parker. So, again, Toy Biz not afraid to really kind of throw some stuff out. So... Here is a spidey body, a little bit of a barrel chest there, and we'll see why just in a second, but with a Peter Parker head. And you can flip it into a spidey head. Yay! Yay for toys! A little bit of limited articulation. He's only got uh, just, you know, simple simple shoulder joints, you know, single. Actually, he does have a el double elbow, but nothing at the ankle. But this figure is all about this play feature and being able to flip Peter's head. Now, it's a little small for the body. It doesn't exactly look right. Even the Spidey head looks too small for for this body. But still, that's a that's still a cool cool little difference. Thanks for doing something crazy. Let's see if we can see if there's a date somewhere on here. It looks like it's right there and that says 2006. So, 15-year-old figure not so bad. This one is the same one that we've seen before, that young Spidey. This one is actually a custom. So it's, a, it's I mean, the guy, whoever I got this from, actually did a really nice job painting the 2099 Spider-Man. But I got it because I wanted this custom, which is supposed to be Spider-Man Noir. Now, this is not quite as good of a custom, obviously, and we've subsequently gotten a really sweet Spidey Noir, so that one just goes in the stack. Oh, yeah! 
I have two of them. I was wondering if I had two of them. So this is another of that Umberto Ramos one. This one, obviously the paint scheme, the, the, uh, the paint app, the wash, looks like it got a little bit off. He's definitely a little more orange up there on top. If we can find his brother and take a look at the comparison between the two. Um, gosh, there's just not that many figures down here and I still can't. Oh, here it is. So yeah, here's the, here's the difference. So you can see how much more orange he is on top, but still what an awesome, what an awesome action figure. Another one of those kind of Romita Jr. ones, this one without the play feature. So a little bit better articulation, but because it still had where that play feature used to be, he doesn't have much bend at that elbow. So this guy kind of comes pre-posed like this, but still pretty neat. This one, I think we just have to call it like no neck Spidey. I, I don't exactly know what's going on here, but uh, I think they probably took a Spidey frame from another figure and tried to put a different head sculpt on it. And it's a pretty cool, you know, 90s head sculpt. It just, there's no neck. That figure has no neck at all. Okay, here's that Care Andrews figure only in blue instead of the black. And this is the one that still has the original play feature where the eyes would light up and they would glow kind of a gold and yellow. But again, this is that Care Andrews look with the really, really tight webbing pattern and the, the super thin arms. All right, so this is the body of the Snapshot Spidey that everybody who's not me tends to love. Obviously, he's had some some neck issues. I, I don't like it because I just kind of never really understood what was going on with these shoulder joints. I thought it was a little, a little bit too much. But still, you know, he can get into some pretty spidery poses because of that. I think he looks terrible, just regular, just kind of there because of how big those, sh those shoulders are. But when you get him kind of locked down into some cool McFarlane-esque looks, he, he definitely looks better. And yet another different black suit. Again, this one, let's see if we can see a date on here. My vision is not as good. 2008. So uh, another different Spidey, a different buck for this guy. Doesn't have quite as much shoulder rotation, but still a, a much thinner, cooler black suit Spidey. He's got the bigger eyes, which I like, um, kind of like this one. But you can see those are two different head sculpts there as well. So these are two completely different black suit Spidey figures. Here is another magnetized. Unfortunately, that magnet came out, but there's a magnet on his foot on that Spidey Classics body with a different head sculpt on there. That's almost, that, you know, guys, if you look at that, that almost looks like a Nicholas Hammond 1970s TV movie head sculpt. Still need a figure of that for sure. All right, here's a good just regular plain Spidey. I'm not sure when this one came out. Let's see if we can see. It says, I think it says 2007. So this would have been, again, kind of right at the beginning of Hasbro days, but just a good, good regular Spidey. This is actually one of the few Spider-Man figures that did appear in Marvel Legends. This is the first appearance, Spider-Man. So he's wearing red and black, the way Jack Kirby drew the cover to Amazing Fantasy 15, which was then inked by Steve Ditko. He has the distinctive spider logo on his chest and the distinctive spider logo with the little head. See the little head on the spider on his back. So that was how Ditko drew Spidey in just the very earliest issues of Amazing Spider-Man, of course, in Amazing Fantasy 15. And that is that classic head sculpt, that classic look from AF-15. This figure came with a web cape, but it just was really poorly done. It kind of went all the way across the back, so I never liked it, so I never, I never used it. But cool, first appearance Spidey. Um, again, this is kind of taking parts from, this is, I believe, taking that chest piece from that Ramita Jr. one, but putting some ball-jointed shoulders, some double-jointed uh, elbows, and ball-jointed hips on there. So, again, able to get a little bit more movement out of that figure. I'm saving some really good ones. This is some kind of small little black suit. Oh, we got like a bare brick Spidey. I'm a sucker for any kind of cute Spidey. Here is something from a 
goblin-y person or something. It almost looks like a penguin. It's weird. And a little battle-damaged mini-mate. So let's see who we have left. This one is the superior Spider-Man. So this is uh, actually Otto Octavius in the body of Peter Parker during Dan Slott's phenomenal uh, run on Superior Spider-Man. And this is, like I said, this is not a Marvel Legend. This is a Marvel Select, so it's seven inches instead of six, but a really good representation. Those eyes are only Superior Spider-Man, so that's how you know what that is. So let's take a look at these two fantastic Todd McFarlane versions of Spider-Man. First up, we've got the Diamond Select or Marvel Select version. Again, not a Marvel Legends, seven inches, little bit limited. You know, he's got T hips, but he does have ball jointed shoulders and uh, decent elbows. He's got some, some bicep swivel, but it's all about that head sculpt. And that is a really nice kind of early in Todd McFarlane's run. So kind of issues, you know, so the red suit came back in issue 301 after Venom uh, came out and, and battled Spidey in issue 300. And Mary Jane was like, uh, nope, we're going back to the red and blues. So this is kind of what Todd's art looked like uh, in those kind of early 300 issues. A lot of times he was still being inked by, by other artists, particularly Joseph Rubenstein was inking him at that time. And it was still a little bit more controlled. Not that it wasn't great. It just, it just was a little different before he was inking himself. But I think that this... I think this one was called The Spectacular Spider-Man, but this very much represents an early Todd McFarlane Spider-Man figure. And then here is maybe the best Todd McFarlane Spidey that you're going to find. So this is Toy Biz's effort at a McFarlane Spidey. Let's see if we can get a date on a foot here, because I just am not good enough to remember exactly when it was. 2004, I believe, is what that says. And that makes sense because it was actually when I, uh, right around the time when I moved back to my hometown, because I remember being so excited. Now, this is full McFarlane inking McFarlane. You know, he's much more detailed, much more muscular detail than you saw in the Spider Man classics. You can even see kind of the, not only can you see the muscles and the sinews, but you can even see almost the, the ripping of his costume here. Yeah, it's particularly uh, seen here on the back with this one. But that head sculpt is like when Todd was doing the adjectiveless Spider-Man book. And listen, man, this thing will get into some serious, crunchy spider poses. You know, this one is so awesome. And I've actually, unfortunately, I've already done kind of my McFarlane era video. And I didn't know where this bad boy was, but he is going to have to come back out for, for some action. We're going to do more videos on Todd McFarlane. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about doing a video specifically on all the different Spider-Man action figures that have been influenced by Todd McFarlane's artwork. And if you guys would like to see that, let me know in the comments. But this was Toy Biz at their finest. Look, every finger is individually articulated. He's got these really kind of cool shoulder joints that don't really impact the sculpt too terribly, but they allow for so many, you know, great, twisty, awesome Spidey McFarlane poses. So save this one, the best for last in this box. It is an incredibly awesome action figure, and I am loving having an entire box of Spider-Man to go through. So if you're not a subscriber, go ahead, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit the notifications bell so you'll know when the next videos are coming out from Carbon Scoring. And I will see you guys soon with our next mystery box.